In a season where Attack on Titan is committing full-scale genocide, a story about a four-year-old kid with no parents is somehow the one that hit me the hardest. Which is sadder? Genocide? Or no parents? <laughs> I want you to imagine a cracked vase. It looks so compromised that it could fall apart at any second. You move in for a closer look, and you see that the vase's fractures have been repaired with gold. This is called kintsugi, an art form and method of repairing things using gold. Kotaro Lives Alone is much like a kintsugi vase. Its foundations are damaged, but inside the cracks there are elements that radiate charm. And when it's chock full of moments that look, well, like this, you might understand why I would compare it to a broken vase or say that its fundamentals are broken. Kotaro is an anime that is more than just a bit rough around the edges. It looks straight up awful a lot of the time. However, just like the vase, there is gold coursing through its veins. And that is thanks to the very essence of its content. You see, at first, Kotaro seems like the newest addition to Netflix's anime junk pile. It unequivocally has production that fits the bill, but it's actually a good anime that's bolstered by its shining qualities. A few A-list voice actors, consistently funny comedy, a story about the joy and sorrow life has to offer, and our infectiously captivating little protagonist ensured that I burned through all 10 episodes in just a day. So let's talk about why each one of these is a good reason to watch Kotaro Lives Alone. Like with most stories, the characters are the beating heart of Kotaro. The setting of the show is a sort of sitcom-style comedy not unlike the pet girl of Sakurasso or the kawaii complex guide to manners and hostile behavior. The main characters all live in the same tiny apartment complex, where both tears and hilarity ensue as soon as Kotaro, voiced by Rie Kugimiya, moves into Unit 203. Kotaro may only be four years old, but he is more well put together than any of his neighbors, and the fact that he speaks and acts like a feudal lord is just the first of his charming traits we learn about. Next door in Unit 202 lives the Toshiki Masuda voiced Karino, a struggling manga artist that quickly becomes Kotaro's best friend and father figure. Karino's editor doesn't hesitate to shoot down his manga drafts because of the poor artwork work, but as soon as Kotaro catches wind of it, he fiercely defends Karino. That's just the kind of loyalty that getting your favorite anime character drawn on your band-aids comes with. He fiercely defends Karino, until he sides with the editor just because. Kotaro may be an adorable little kid, but he comes with the blunt cruelty that kids his age tend to have, and it makes for a ton of funny moments. They go to the bathhouse together every night since their apartments don't have baths, they go to and from kindergarten together, they go pretty much everywhere together because it's dangerous outside and Karino isn't going to let Kotaro go out by himself. Kotaro may be a strong, independent child who managed to rent an apartment all by himself, but he knows firsthand that the world outside isn't sunshine and rainbows. Unless the world outside is limited to Mizuki's apartment, which smells like flowers and cotton candy. Mizuki is voiced by none other than Sayori Hayami, one of my favorite seiyuu and known for roles like Yukino from Oregairu and Shinobu from Demon Slayer. Her voice is just as sweet as Mizuki smells to her neighbors, and her performance here is a memorable one. In one episode, Kotaro asks Karino how he can spend more time with Mizuki since she might terminate her lease once it's up, and Karino tells him he could select her at the cabaret club where she works. Cue one of the funniest moments in the anime, where Kotaro does exactly that and then makes Karino foot the bill. Downstairs lives Isamu, a Yakuza-looking guy who loves nothing more than to hang out with Kotaro because his shitty ex-wife pretends that his own son doesn't want to see him. He's got nothing on Kiryu or Majima, but Isamu is an irreplaceable part of the apartment squad and Kotaro likes him more than he really lets on. Plus, he's voiced by Junichi Suabe, paragon of gar and manliness. Kotaro Lives Alone has a lot more characters than just those living at the apartment complex, but I should save some for you to discover by yourself, which is what the anime is truly about at its core. Discovery. When we get down to business, Kotaro Lives Alone is a story about figuring out life. Life is a pathway through rose bushes. There will be roses, but there will also be thorns. The reason the title of this video claims Kotaro Lives Alone to be the darkest anime so far this year isn't because Kotaro has to deal with the shitty parts of life. It's because staring those shitty parts in the face is all the poor kid's ever really known. Yeah, he's a four-year-old with a vocabulary that exceeds that of most college graduates, but he's been down pretty bad ever since he could form memories. Typical parental neglect is the very least of his worries. Things escalate to their logical extremes when his mom literally abandons him and his dad goes batshit insane. Kotaro has to hide from his dad and even takes out a restraining order against him. Meanwhile, the situation with his mom reaches the worst possible conclusion, even if he isn't aware of it. 
Many of the gut-wrenching moments are usually when the other characters learn a bit more about Kotaro's situation, why he lives alone, the reason he buys so many tissues, or the reason he receives money every week from an unknown, generous benefactor, why he rings random people's doorbells, why he wears the same shirt every day, why the only thing he has left of his mom is a pair of gloves, why he feels the need to do everything on his own, it never really ends. And despite all these harrowing realities that comprise Kotaro's grim backstory, this is an anime about the bad and the good aspects of life. By living at the apartment, Kotaro learns that everyone has struggles. He learns that you can help one another to get through hardship, and that life has its ups when you're surrounded by kind people. Kotaro's pathway through the rose bushes started out with only the biggest, sharpest thorns, that much is certain. But the farther he trudges on, the more he starts to smell the roses. Everyone Kotaro meets bears issues of their own, and the inhabitants of the apartment complex all work as a support group of kinds. This type of story can and has been told in so many different ways, but seeing it done through the highly unique lens offered by an innocent kid like Kotaro is cathartic. For every moment of despair, there are at least two moments that made me laugh. For each time a sad reality surfaces about one of the characters, a wholesome moment is ready to replace it, like the time when Karino is the only adult to help set up the school's culture festival. None of the actual parents are willing to help out, yet the mangaka who's worried about getting his work done and is always getting roasted for being lazy is the only person to step up. It's a story that has a lot to say about personal growth, too, and it's the golden moments like those that help to reinforce the poor production. That is to say, the cracks in the vase. There is one anime that I couldn't stop being reminded of the entire time I was watching Kotaro. It's an old title from 1999 called Legend of Black Heaven, and in short, it's about a middle-aged guy going through a midlife crisis and trying to regain the rock star life he lived in his youth. It's also one of my favorite anime, but what does it have to do with Kotaro Lives Alone and why couldn't I stop thinking about it? It's because Black Heaven, just like Kotaro, is similar to a Kintsugi vase. The visuals are below average, even for the 90s, and it shamelessly reuses the same song over and over and over. Kotaro and Black Heaven couldn't be more different, but the shining qualities visible through the cracks are what they do have in common. I've always had a soft spot for anime that look like they were made in PowerPoint when they have something great to lift them up, and just like Black Heaven before it, Kotaro offers that something. It offers some of the best comedy since Sleepy Princess and the Demon Castle. It offers a look at what it's like to live among thorns and roses. And hopefully it's going to offer a second season, because the story is far from over, and I'll be damned if I don't get to see this little guy find a happy ending. Kotaro Lives Alone is my winter 2022 anime of the season if we aren't counting sequels and continuing anime, and if you've made it this far into the video, I think it's safe to say you'll have a good time with it as well. Move into the apartment complex and engross yourself in the bittersweet life of this endearing little kid and everyone else who calls the place home. Kotaro may have lived alone at first, but by the end, he's certainly living in good company. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed that video, and if you did, maybe hit that subscribe button and check out some of my anime retrospectives. I've also got another Fate video coming up, as well as a couple of other goodies, so stay tuned for those. That's really all for now, so I hope you watch Kotaro Lives Alone, and I'll be back soon.